Hello there, a uh, very good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Politics. I'm your host, Eddie Lane, and as usual, this program is dedicated to, first and foremost, a talk about the development taking place in our country, uh, the unprecedented level of development, if I should, um, should say, uh, while at the same time responding to the misinformation, lies, and, and division being um, spread and orchestrated by uh, the opposition APNU AFC. I have with me my regular Saturday guest, uh, Sanjeev Dattadin. Sanjeev is a member of parliament for the People's Progressive Party Civic, and of course, he is a attorney at law by profession. Sanjeev, good evening. It's a pleasure once again. Good evening, Ed. Good evening to your viewers and your listeners. It's always a pleasure to be here, and let's talk politics. Interesting. Uh, certainly, and, and I want to, I want Sanjeev, I want to deal with... Uh, one of the most topical issues that we have at hand right now um and that has to do with the this vile low um and, and like i said earlier almost criminal campaign that the opposition has undertaken to to somehow try to discredit and to cast doubt on the most aggressive the most uh, successful vaccination, COVID-19 vaccination campaign in the Caribbean. Guyana, as a country, has the most aggressive and the most successful COVID-19 vaccination campaign in the Caribbean. And we are seeing in the last few days, you've seen the kind of lies, misinformation, uh, blatant attempts to 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 put some sort of cast some sort of doubt over the, the the authenticity and the success of this campaign and it's coming from the opposition led by joe harman who happens to be one of the persons publicly confessing that he would have taken both doses of its put of his sputnik v vaccine the same vaccine he's trying to to use as a tool to cast doubt over this uh, vaccination program. Sanjeev, and to our viewers, this is clearly, uh, I, I would say, a criminal act from Harman trying to put the lives of people at risk. Ed, I'm not a medical doctor, but common sense and all that you've seen around you is we are in the midst of a global pandemic. Make no bones about it. It's serious. We have lost 400 plus lives in this country. It's for a very small country. We are facing the pandemic, but we're just like the rest of the world. The rest of the world and everyone else accept you need to wear your mask, wash your hands, and you need to get vaccinated. This is what helps you. It has been repeatedly released, not only in Guyana, but around the world that no one who has had both doses if you've had both your doses in guyana what has been released by the ministry of health is no one who has had both doses or are is fully vaccinated of any of the vaccines have died now it is being reported around the world that the numbers for persons who have received their full dose of vaccines whether it's uh whatever AstraZeneca, Sinopharm, uh, Sputnik 5, whichever one. No one, the, the number of persons who have died is in fact very, very small. So let's start at the beginning. Vaccines is sound science. We, we take it in Guyana when we're born, young children, measles, mumps, rubella, polio. Vaccine is accepted scientific technology to help protect people. The vaccines that Guyana have imported and the vaccines that the government of Guyana, the Irfan Ali-led administration, is distributing for free across this country is to save your life. It is not for Bill Gates to put a chip in you. It is not to track you. It is not to, 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 to do all of these fanciful, nonsensical things 
that are being peddled. So get vaccinated. It will save your life. Now, unfortunately, Ed, what has happened recently is this. There was a question asked in Parliament on Monday by many of the uh, opposition parliamentarians, but including the opposition leader, about the acquisition of the vaccines and the cost. And it was made known on the floor of Parliament that the acquisition, there was money that Parliament was being asked to approve to buy 200,000 doses of Sputnik V and 100,000 doses of Sinopharm. It was explained that it was be, we had contacted the Russian Sovereign Fund and the Institute, the, the, I can't remember the name of the Institute that manufactures it, and they had said, go to our distributors. They have it available. We made an arrangement with the distributor. They're saying that the vaccines are available at $10 and we paid $20 for it. And we have obtained what we've paid for and we are distributing it to the people of Guyana, including the opposition leader. Now, it makes no sense as to why, or I don't understand why that all of a sudden made such a big furor in the news. The vice president at a press conference that he had some weeks ago said very clearly that we are trying to sort, he answered a question from the press, we are trying to source vaccines from wherever we can get. And he also said, we are desperate. We, we might have paid anything for those vaccines because Guyana, Guyanese people, the government and the Irfan Ali-led administration are trying to save lives in Guyana. Now, you, in, the, in the whole geopolitics of, of, of the world and everything that is going on, Guyana is not a G7 country. Guyana is not one of the dominant nations. Pfizer is supplying the United States, North America. Moderna is doing the same. AstraZeneca is principally doing the United Kingdom, uh, parts of Europe, and India. Uh, the, the vaccines are, be, are, are now scarce, and everybody's trying to look after their own. And we have to play the hand we're dealt. Our government must do the very best for our people. And by doing that, it means that if, they, if the, the, the agent who is involved is charging a premium of a price, what choice do we have? It's the law of supply and demand. We want the vaccines. We want the vaccines now. He's demanding a higher price. We're not so keen on having that to pay that higher price. But what other choice we do? We could choose to say, no, we're not going to do it. But then what happens? People are going to die. So what price are you going to put on a Guyanese citizen's life? Exactly what price does the opposition think is too much to pay to save a Guyanese life? Now, they want to quarrel and they want to make an issue out of the, the, the characters of, uh, of the persons who are involved. We're not trying to elect them in, in the country. We're not trying to, 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 to bring them into our family. We're not trying to do it. We're, try, we're, uh, we're simply trying to get supply of vaccines. Now, I understand that you want to delve into people's personality and, and, and you have the views that you shouldn't be involved with certain people. And if this person is, is, uh, has this character flaw or whatever you want to do that. But do you do that when you go to the store? Do you ask the shop man his history and how much people cost him and how much people he costs him? Do you do that? This is not reality. I understand the sentiment, the sentiment of asking questions of how it has been done. But this has been no secret because even before the vice president's uh, press conference where he answered very clearly, his excellency, the president had said publicly in Guyana, we're paying $20 for uh, a Sputnik V vaccine. He said that very clearly. This is no secret. This is not being hidden. 
But what is being done is we're taking the part of the price. Do you know I was in Parliament? The Minister of Health, Dr. Anthony, asked the opposition leader, if you can source the vaccines at a lower price, we are prepared to talk to you and to engage you. Nobody could get it at a lower price. But the important thing is it's $10 versus $20. This is to save lives here in Guyana. We have to fend for ourselves. We have to make our own arrangements. When Pfizer and Moderna says they're not going to be available until 2022 because they're supplying North America. What are we to do? Sit and wait while people die? We can't do that. The argument about whether it is satisfactory to the WHO, it is being used by UNICEF apart around the world. Sputnik, I'm speaking of Sputnik 5. It has been approved by Lancet magazine, which is a, a very prestigious journal. It is being used in more than 50 countries around the world. Now, you have to understand the geopolitics of the world too. It is not widely used in Western nations, but it is widely used in, in I don't want to say communist nations or, or, or nations leading that, but it is not you, so widely used in Western nations. It is used in Africa. It is used in Asia. It is used in the Middle East. The same with the Chinese vaccines. Sinopharm and Sinovac is widely used in China. There are more than a billion people. It is used in India. It is used in parts of Africa, parts of South America. Now, it, it, it basically is, Ed, you, the best vaccine is the one that's available because every vaccine has a certain level of efficacy. Some claim more, some claim less, but they all have some degree of efficacy. They offer some level of protection. So it's very important that Guyanese understand, forget the rhetoric, forget the politics, get vaccinated because it's your life. The opposition leader who is saying to people that we should suspend vaccines, he got his vaccine. So suspending or stopping it doesn't affect him. The other parliamentarians, opposition parliamentarians, they've been vaccinated too. So it doesn't stop them. It doesn't affect them. But, but we should understand the realities get vaccinated don't invent questions today i saw a letter that has been published from the minister of health who, that says the full chain of custody the full manufacture the batch numbers the, the all the the information has been verified the chain of custody for the cold storage of the vaccines to Guyana has been verified and authenticated, and these vaccines are what are being distributed to people in Guyana. So don't listen to the what ifs. If you listen to conspiracy theories, there's always a part of a, about it that you cannot explain because you don't have the paper and the documents. It's like if the man walked on the moon and you want to say, well, what do we have? Only the pictures that he took but you don't have your own independent pictures, how are you going to get that? So, so to make these demands and to have all of these so-called Facebook experts deter you from saving your life is a really, really, really bad decision to follow them. Do not look after your own lives. For yourself, you need to do this. Thank you very much, uh, Sanjeev. And interestingly, uh, you, you know what the bottom line of all of this um, really is? And I'm happy that the Minister of Health took a decision to really respond to Harmon and the hogwash he's writing to request. You could you imagine, this is the bottom line, a man who took both doses of his vaccine, who is now safe, way safer than you who haven't taken the vaccine because even if Harmon is to, to contract the virus, he is... He's 98% sure he will not get seriously ill. He will not end up in the ICU. And God forbid, he will not become one of the fatalities as, uh, of, of this virus. So the man who is telling you not to take the vaccine has protected himself by taking both doses. He also ensured that 
his relatives and his close friends are vaccinated. And this is not, this is factual. This is absolute facts. Many members of Harmon's, um, many of Harmon's parliamentarians have taken the vaccine, both doses, because entering parliament, you're required to produce evidence of that you're vaccinated. So many of his parliamentarians who sat in parliament on Thursday last had to show that they were vaccinated to be able to enter parliament physically. So his group is vaccinated and protected. And he's telling you, don't take the vaccine because he wants some information. He wants batch numbers. Well, the Minister of Health, His Excellency, the advice to the minister and every other person who spoke on this matter made it clear that that information is available on the vaccination card. So people, they don't need Harmon to go and check the authenticity of the vaccine. They can do it themselves. They can use that information, make contact with the relevant people to find out the, the, authentic, the authenticity of the vaccine. But Harmon, whose government then in power failed to protect the Guyanese people when the pandemic started, is now trying to, 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 to put a damper on a program that is regarded as the best in the Caribbean. We are being lauded across the Caribbean for our vaccination program because we have vaccinated more than half of our population already, at least with the first dose. And close to 100,000 people, if not about 100,000 already, have received their second dose. So we are far ahead of the game. And like you rightly said, Sanji, any responsible government that is faced with a situation where on one hand you have to protect the lives of your citizens and on the other hand you have to consider the cost to get the necessary vaccination to protect them. As far as I'm concerned, and I believe this is the thinking of any right-thinking Guyanese, that you cannot put a cost to lives. You cannot put a cost to the lives of the people of any country. And as a government, the PUP had no choice. And any 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 sensible, any right thinking government, any responsible government, any government that has the interest of the people at heart, will say, I cannot, I cannot sit and allow price to be an issue when people will die. And it's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. And the Minister of Health did challenge Harmon to, to bring the evidence of cheaper vaccines. If he can get the vaccines cheaper, then he should bring the evidence. But you know, corrupt minds always think others are corrupt. So Harmon knows if APNU was in office and they had to procure the vaccine, then they would have procured vaccines so that they can benefit from about 50% of the cost that, that they will put to it. So if they had to send, spend $100 million, they knew, they knew they were going to put that at $200 million so that they can get their kickbacks. So because of the thinking in their heads, they think every other government is going to be like them. So automatically, they somehow believe that procuring the vaccine, the PUP is ready to... to, to, to maybe steal money or something of that sort. That is a trait of the afternoon. So, you know, a thief always, always sees everyone else as a thief, thinking that they are doing the same, because that is what the only thing that is in their heads. And that is what happened to Harmon. Harmon somehow thought that, you know, if we were there, we would have put so much and um, make some money. I think the PUP is doing that. But the PUP has always been and will continue to be a transparent and open government. And if needs be, I'm sure, stand ready to defend and, and to prove the fact that the monies that were spent were well spent. As far as I'm concerned, Sanji, even if a shot of the vaccine cost $50, I don't think 
fifty dollars is enough but that is not a price that you can put on a life so the reality is what we are doing is ensuring that we protect the people of this country and to ensure that we can get out of this pandemic as fast as possible this is not just about individuals the economic impact of this pandemic cuts across all sectors it cuts across all political party supporters so it's not one party supporters being um are suffering not one group of people suffering not one sector suffering every sector and i, I keep referring to many many letters and statements and and pronouncement being made by um, medical experts and so on that the only path out of this pandemic is through vaccination so Harmon can cry as much as he wants and i think the minister of health put him in his place today with that letter because he's asking for information and all sorts of things questions that he himself and his mps asked last thursday on the vaccination so Harmon is trying to reinvent himself uh, he has become irrelevant not only um, among uh, the supporters of the PUP, but he has now become irrelevant among the supporters of his own party many of whom believe and you're seeing these statements repeatedly that Harmon is a failure and Harmon is not really representing the interests of the people Harmon should be lobbying he should be lobbying the government to get more vaccines to ensure that the people are protected rather than trying to use this time to deter people from taking the vaccine things that we can't lose sight of at all in what's going on um they were in Guyana three vaccines available astrazeneca uh sinopharm and sputnik now the sinopharm vaccines that we obtained we we were able to to purchase some we we got some from china a small amount the astrazeneca ones that we got we got some from as a donation from india and we got some from the covax program that allows for equitable distribution now if we're only waiting on those and if we're only waiting on the astrazeneca um we would have had probably 40,000 people vaccinated or a little bit more. I, I might be wrong on the numbers, but 80,000 is what we initially got. We got some after. So we would really be not past 100,000. Um, and that would only be, that would only, 50,000 people would be fully vaccinated in Guyana. That's not, that's such a high risk for a country Guyana has to accept its place in the world. We can't demand as much as the bigger countries can. We can't spend as much as the bigger countries can. We don't have the medical facilities and technology that all of the bigger countries can. We are now growing to get to there. We are now growing so that our people get better services and health care. So we can't afford to have people get sick we would get the, the the health facilities would get overwhelmed easily so the sensible thing was acquire vaccines from wherever it was available and get the people vaccinated so that they don't get so sick so that our they don't we don't require thousands and hundreds of ventilators like they do in other countries so that we don't require thousands or hundreds of thousands of hospital beds as as is going on in other countries so that we don't require thousands hundreds of thousands of liters of oxygen daily because our health system we have to accept the reality of where we are so the fragility that we have we're now building towards those capacities but we got to accept where we are. People get ill. And if large volumes of people get ill, our system is going to be overwhelmed. And they're the outlying areas too. We have a flood going on. We have, we have that struggle. We, we, we have to find a way 
to try to reduce the amount of critically ill people and the vaccines are the way to do it now don't I, I don't understand the logic that is being said. First, there was no support of the vaccines. That's why the uptake in areas that are traditionally opposition uh, supporters, the uptake is low. We've asked them repeatedly, please tell your supporters to take the vaccine. It will save their lives. We have started incentivizing taking a vaccine which is being provided for free, even though the government is spending money on it, the government is providing it for free. Now, of course, you, you know, everyone is an adult and they can make their own decision, but don't inject into your own well-being, health, and the health of your family and your community, all of these nefarious thoughts and ideas into it about who says what, about all these imaginary things about Bill Gates wanting to follow you, about wanting to tag you, and, and all these imaginary things that you that got no basis in reality. Like, that, that is why I fully support, and I thought it was that Dr. Anthony, when Dr. Frank Anthony said to the opposition leader, what you're saying about fake, if you have no proof of it, withdraw it so that people understand what you were doing. He's saying about raising issues about authenticity of fake. I have a whole lot of these Facebook professors going on about it. But the reality is, the reality is on what basis? Conjecture? Look at the cards that you have. Look at the cards that are being issued. Check the batch number, date of manufacture, where it is from. Do those things with the vaccine cards. Don't just sit there and come up with conjecture. It's like you asking repeatedly, where was it sourced from? What was the price? Everybody's asking as if this is some grandiose thing. And for more than six weeks, first His Excellency, as I said before, the Vice President, the Minister, it has been all the time there. It seems that they've now woken up and decide this is an issue that they're going to muddy the waters and fool the Guyanese people about again. This, is, this was all known all along. Why didn't they say anything before? They surely had to have been paying attention. They surely knew that these answers were being given. Now, all of a sudden, they've made it into this issue. Yes, it is legitimate that you ask. But you have asked. You have been given answers for weeks about what is going on. It is not legitimate for you to engage in conjecture. It is not legitimate for you to make false accusations. And it is certainly not legitimate that when you have taken the vaccines and protected your own lives and the lives of your family, that you encourage others to stop it and you, and you demand that the government stop vaccine stop distributing vaccines to the citizens because there that puts not your life at risk that puts their life at risk and you have no right no leader no leader of any form has the right to put the lives of their supporters at risk the responsibility it is their responsibility to not do so and regrettably, this is what's happening. This is what it's turning into. You know, there are great fears. If you look at the news, you read the newspapers, you look at what's going on. There is the Delta variant of, of the coronavirus that is causing infection rates to double in the United Kingdom every 11 days. That's what I saw on the BBC News, every 11 days. The Delta variant is, of course, the India variant that created havoc in New Delhi and the rest of India. Now, people, they, they have a high percentage of persons who were vaccinated in England, so it has not created the, the knock-on effect of hospitalization and deaths, but it's people are being tested positive. But here's what the problem is. The problem is, 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 is apparently, from what is being reported, the Delta variant is more aggressive. It spreads quicker and it affects you severely much, much, much faster. 
The problem is, is that this is already in the United Kingdom and the United States. It's a matter of time, I would guess, before it shows up in these shores. When it does, please make sure that you have had your vaccine before because that variant is going to be a very, very trying test. It's going to be a storm that we need to weather and we need to get prepared. We know it's there. We know it's coming. This is why the, the, the government, the Irfan Ali-led administration is working so hard, doing everything they can to incentivize vaccines, giving gas, giving vouchers, giving anything to get you to take it because it will save your life. They're not trying to mislead you. They're not trying to make you sick. They're not trying to tag you for Bill Gates. They're not trying any of these foolish things. They're trying to do the one thing that is their obligation to do, and that is to save your life, to protect you the best way they can. And I really do hope that this week of nonsensical arguments goes away and is replaced by reason by sensible, responsible conduct. And that we all of these vaccines that we have in the country, we must use every one. And we must save every possible person. As long as you can take the vaccine, please do. Please do. And, and Sanjeev, you know, um, I, I think though, because I'm, I'm looking at the figures, I'm looking at the information available, I think People are, and, and I know for, for that matter, Guyanese are smarter and understand that, you know, uh, Harmon is playing politics. But it's sad when people profess themselves as leaders are playing politics with the lives of people, are playing politics with the well being of people. Um, for Harmon and his gang, it's not about whether what they're doing is right or wrong. It's, it's more about them winning. So if if they can 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 make these these spurious claims and somehow force the suspension of the use of the vaccine, it's a victory for them. Even if it means it's gonna put thousands, tens of thousands of Guyanese at risk of contracting the virus or maybe you know getting seriously ill um, if they're not vaccinated. So it's not so much about the well-being of the people, but it's really for narrow political gains, their narrow political agenda. But I think the people of this country are very smart. I'm reading an article as of yesterday, which spoke to uh, the rate of vaccination. And it talks here about 61,000 people, uh, persons being fully vaccinated with this Sputnik V. And more than 100,000 receiving the first dose um, and will soon receive their second dose. So while Harmon is singing his doom and gloom, while he's trying his level best uh, to dampen a program that is, 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 and I keep repeating this, that is by far the most aggressive in the Caribbean. And it is per capita, the vaccination rate in Guyana per capita outstrip many developed and developing countries. When you look at the, 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 the per capita, way, way higher than many countries because we have managed to vaccinate maybe about 50% of our adult population already and maybe above that. Many on countries Monday cannot was, boast about that. Huh? On Monday it was 48%. I would assume that by now we have crossed 50% of people already vaccinated in Guyana. We have, of course, Ed, you, you, know, you, you said something very important, that there are so many people who have taken the first dose of Sputnik and have to take the second dose. And it is really not fair to them that the leader of the opposition plant these seeds in their head and, and around the place to people and discourage them taking the second dose that they need to take. He did it. He took both doses of his vaccine. So he shouldn't do that. You see, because the, the, the way it works is, is you got to have both doses to get your best effect. And to have someone on the basis of 
utter conjecture and and simply wanting to say things i mean while while we were on i had a look at some of the things you know at first what mr harman said is that 200,000 uh, fake Sputnik or whatever vaccines were found in Mexico. It turns out that it was that it was about two thousand in one report, and it was uh, both numbers were less than five thousand. He said that we have to get authenticity because if it's two hundred thousand, when they issued the statement that followed what he said, they didn't include anything about that because as soon as they said it, it was pointed out on social media that those numbers were false. The next thing that he says is, is try to raise and question the, the character of the people who are the agents or the supplier. I don't know the gentleman. I don't know who are his partners. But realistically, when you go to Dave's pharmacy, Ed, do you question Dave about his past and his business and, and, and what you're doing? You're trying to get medicine to save your life. I understand that you shouldn't do business with certain people and you should satisfy yourself. But once you've satisfied yourself that this is what it is, and the statement from the Ministry of Health was clear as day, it was verified from the manufacturer, the batch, the, the manufactured date, the expiry date, the batch numbers, whatever codes were put on it, whatever shipment codes, they were all confirmed. That's what the Minister of Health said today in his statement that he released. So all of that being done, we, we can't take it upon ourselves to go judge other people. I mean, look, if he's done things that he needs to be answerable for, fair enough, be answerable. If he has business partners that need to answer to certain things, fair enough. Let the relevant, let him answer to the relevant country and law enforcement agency that he must. But if what we are doing is buying vaccines and they have managed to obtain vaccines and we are able to save lives here, I don't think that we have to go into all of that explanation. I don't think we are obliged to go into that much investigation. I understand what people are saying that look, and it's a legitimate concern. You should do business or you should only interact with people of a certain standing. That is true. But it, we're in a pandemic and desperate for vaccines. So as long as we can verify, as the minister said today, very clearly he could, everybody's vaccine cards, they can look at it and they will see the details on the vaccine cards written up. They can verify for themselves too. And all they need to do is verify for your either yourself or check with ministry i mean satisfy yourself but don't listen to these fairy tales and don't don't be distracted about the person who is the agent i i don't know i have seen things that are very negative i've seen things that are positive i don't know exactly anything about it that i can speak authoritatively on what I can say is that the vaccines that he's supplied are genuine. It has come from the manufacturer. It has been delivered to Guyana with the cold chain storage that is required. It is safe. It is being used in Guyana and other parts of the world. In Africa, it is being used, supplied by him as well. So that I know. Whatever you want to make him answer for otherwise, that's fair. Go ahead and make him answer for that. But don't conflate the two things and say that a man's character is what you're doing or, or the way he does business you don't agree with or that he's charging a higher price than he should and he, he doesn't have a conscience, he should have a lower price. All of these things you're entitled to believe. All of these things people are entitled to question. But they're not entitled to conflate the two things, the man's personality and the man and the product that we have received don't conflate the two they are not he is not the manufacturer of the vaccine he is not the person who we need to question about that what we need to do is to make sure that we confirm with the manufacturers and and dr anthony was very clear today the batches the everything and as you just said 
it's written on your vaccine card so they can look at it and verify for themselves where it has come from, when it has come from, expiry date, and batch numbers. That's easily available. So the thing is, Angie, you know, um, I think, and it's sad that we have to spend, you know, valuable time responding and trying to set the record straight because, you know, as a result of the nonsense coming from the opposition, but, you know, it's important that we deal with these matters and that we, we, we provide people with the kind of information necessary so that they don't buy the rubbish, the misinformation coming from Harmon and, and the others and put themselves in a position where, like you rightly said, you're trying to, to put a damp on people, uh, over 100,000 people who took the first dose, who are now um, preparing to take the second dose, and you're telling them that there's something wrong with the vaccine. The vaccine, if you took both doses that your friends and your family, your colleagues, parliamentarians on your side took, and that uh, so many people, leaders in the PNC and so on, took, you are saying to the average guy is not to take. I mean, this. I only hope, I wish there was some way in which Harmon could have been held accountable. I know he will be held accountable. He will be held accountable for this by the people of this country. But, you know, it's sad. It's absolutely sad, Sanji, that we have to spend valuable time talking about the nonsense coming out of the, the AP and UFC camp. And these are things that are aimed at creating distractions too. You know, looking at the, the the manner in which this government has been um, responding very responsive to issues facing people look at the floods for example the ministers have been on the ground continue to be on the ground continue to meet out to people continue to to provide the necessary support that they need look at the pandemic and i, I made this point before the pup even before we assumed office on august 2nd then president elect dr irfan ali was on the ground ensuring that people receive masks ensuring that that you know efforts are made to fight the pandemic and his actions from day one when he entered office was to respond to to to, to reconfigure the, the national task force to make it one with more technical uh, people and to respond to to the COVID-19 pandemic and we've been doing that all along look at other countries look at Trinidad for example look at the numbers coming out of Trinidad where there is no they have now started to have a, a, a um, COVID-19 vaccination program. If you look at the numbers coming out of Trinidad and Tobago, you will see the impact of not um, providing the vaccines to people. On a daily basis, the numbers in Trinidad and Tobago, and if, if I can, I'm trying to get it here. Today, you had 227 new cases. You have 227 new cases today with 10 deaths. So, and, and look at many other Caribbean countries, look at, look at many other countries around the world, you will see where there is low vaccination, what happens. And these are the very vaccines that we're using. The Sputnik V, I think the efficacy is about 98% based on, on the technical information available. There isn't a single case, a single case where someone who took the Sputnik V died. And the Minister of Health, and, and the same thing goes to all the other vaccines, but I'm speaking specifically to the Sputnik V because this is the vaccine that, 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 that Harman and his gang keep talking about. There isn't, the Minister of Health made the point that there isn't a single occasion where they have information to prove that people who took vaccines got well well the number of persons who got who contracted the virus is extremely low and we made it clear from 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 the onset that the vaccines will not prevent you from getting covid what it will do is to prevent you from ending up in the hospital and from uh, you know ending up in the icu and and who knows God forbid, it can it can cost you your life. So I want to encourage the people of this country, Sanji. If you're 18 years and older, go. 
take your vaccine. Remember, the supporters of the APNU who may be uh, persuaded by what Harmon and and his um, his keyboard warriors are saying. When whenever you try to consider the information that they're giving that they're giving to you, trying to tell you not to take the vaccine, just remember that Harmon took both doses, and many of his MPs took both doses of the Sputnik V. So why did he take it? And why is he telling you not to take it? It's as simple as that. You look at the fact that he took it, many of his MPs took it, his close relatives and friends took it. Why exactly is he telling you not to take it? And Sanjeev, this all started, it's a game. Clearly it's a game for Harman and his gang because they started off first with the price of the vaccine. Their first question was the price to say that we bought vaccine, vaccines at X price, or we could have gotten it cheaper. That argument was rejected. That argument was debunked. Because at the end of the day, the People's Progressive Party Civic as a government made it clear that we cannot put a price tag on the lives of the people of this country. There is no price tag. So many people, including supporters of APNU, were rejecting that claim about the price and and trying to, to make an issue out of the price of the vaccine. But the price of commodities, there's a simple, simple thing. The law of supply and demand determines the price of commodities. So the demand is high, the price will go up. That's the reality. So Harmon couldn't succeed with that. So he went back and he came back with some new argument, shifting the goalposts, trying to create more confusion by claiming that the vaccines are fake by claiming that the vaccines are fake there's absolutely no evidence to support Harmon's claim absolutely none and he has been changing and shifting the goalposts and coming up with all sorts of arguments as he go along trying his level best to destroy a program that is the most successful in the caribbean has us in a position now where the number of people who are getting sick is decreasing and the number of deaths significantly down. The program is successful. The vaccines are the only thing that can take us out of this pandemic. And I encourage every single guy who once you reach the age to take the vaccine. That is the only thing that will save your life. You cannot rely on 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 just wearing your masks and be locked home all the time look at the us look at china look at many other countries that that, that have mass vaccination programs you find that their numbers are significantly low so again i want to say to the people of this country you be the judge you ask yourself why Harmon, who took the vaccine is telling you not to take it that's the simple question you have to ask yourself why Harmon and, took it? I'm telling you not to take it. And Ed, you know, I would like to, we, we got to realize as well, we've spent, we've forced our uh, Minister of Health and other health officials and other persons to have to divert their time to answer these ridiculous questions when we, in addition to being in a pandemic, the flooding in Guyana is really bad. The medical services and the Ministry of Health is doing everything they can to get care packages out with for medical supplies, help get medics, get doctors to people. That still has to be done in the middle of the, all of this going on with the pandemic. And it really is unfair, but it's unreasonable and is it's irresponsible as an opposition that you will raise these fanciful things knowing fully well that the ministry in health and uh, ministry of health in Guyana is dealing with this pan not only the pandemic but with the flooding and trying to keep people safe and healthy and you add by just creating what you sit down from your mind and, and imagine and fantasy you fantasize about and come up with these things and then you have to debunk all of it 
And you have to do all of that just so that you could get people to understand that what's being said is not true. What's being said should not be believed. It really is unfair and irresponsible as opposition parliamentarians and opposition leaders to have raised the things in this manner and to have tried to, to, to score cheap political points and on this manner when our, our leaders in the Ministry of Health and our leaders in cabinet and, and the president himself needs to be focused on an unfolding flood, uh, a disaster that's happening in Guyana. And we need to also, the Ministry of Health is integrally involved in that. It is, it is truly, truly unfortunate. Um, I don't know what to say, but all of the arguments that have been raised are being debunked. It takes a day or two for, for you to expose what is being said as being untrue. And hopefully, hopefully this has helped a few people clear up in their minds and, and clear up for themselves and their family and their family members. And it, uh, it persuades them that vaccination is the way to go. It will save your life, I promise you. Scientifically, it is medically backed. And it is the sensible thing to do. Ed, let me be the first to wish all our viewers and, a, and our listeners a happy Father's Day for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Father's Day, and I hope you all have an enjoyable day tomorrow. Thanks, Sanjeev. And I want to join with you as we wrap here to, to, to extend Father's Day greetings to all fathers. And to you, Sanjeev, yourself, um, and again, all fathers across Guyana, um, tomorrow, you know, Father's Day is not really a big day for a lot of people. <laughs> you know, Mother's Day always sure. take the cake. Well, it means um, tomorrow is I get terrorized <laughs> twice as much by my son. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you again, Sanji, for being here. And to our viewers, we want to say thanks for being part of the program. We're going to be back with you soon to bring you more information and, of course, uh, to keep talking politics with you. Until then, we urge you to stay safe. Those of you who are eligible, please take your vaccines. And if you're stepping out, wear a mask, sanitize and keep a safe distance from others. Have a good rest of the evening. Bye for now.